I'm going to show you how to make this hologram in Blender using geometry nodes. It's inspired by the likes of Akira and Blade Runner. To begin, we'll open up Blender, and I'm going to just show you the node graph step by step, and we're going to start over here. So it all starts with a strings to curve node, which is built in. It basically creates a outline of whatever geometry you want with a curve object. And you can obviously edit and change this later. Then I'm going to resample the curve, and that basically gives us an even distribution of points as we go along each letter. I'm going to fill that curve, and I'm going to realize the instances. I realize the instances because later when we curve it or bend it, this allows us to do that. Then I'm going to transform it so it's faced upright. And I'm going to use this bend node. So this is actually not built into Blender. This is the only thing that is custom. And this was bought and downloaded by this creator, Higas, or Higs, Higsas. I don't know how to pronounce it, excuse me. But it's only five euros or five dollars and it's incredibly helpful. It has a ton of really helpful and interesting notes. And I'm gonna just show you once it's bent, you can kind of see it's wrapped in a circle. So the circle right now is kind of like offset from the center of the, the scene. So I'm going to transform it just to put it centered. And then I'm going to use this one to rotate it. So uh, it's a little hard to see, like nothing really happened between these two. But here I'm, I'm feeding in the time, the scene time, along with um, I added it just to give an initial offset because from my camera position, I wanted it to start a specific way. And then I multiply it to choose my speed, and I do a combine XYZ on the Z axis to choose the axis I want it to rotate on. And then I'm going to extrude the mesh. So this just gives it a little bit of depth when visually um, it helps it feel a little bit more like a volume hologram. And then lastly, I'm going to set the material. So this is the essential aspect to creating the lettering in the hologram. The next part is how to create all those lines. So we're ultimately going to create something that looks like this. So to do that, I start by just creating a mesh line. This is just to get a bunch of points because we're going to instance on points. So it basically creates, in this example, 3,000 points all at the center. And then I'm going to use a transform. So this one actually, uh, by default, it's going to create all these points at this origin, 0, 0, 0. But I offset it and I push it upward just a little bit. And obviously, you could change this to your liking, however you think fits what you're trying to create. We instance a bunch of points, or created a bunch of points, but we need to instance something onto it. And that's what these lines are. So I create a curve line which is basically just like a single line that goes upward. I resample it so there's only two points, the beginning and the end. I use a line Euler to vector to deal with the rotation. And I also feed, I feed that in right here. Um, and then I randomize a rotation. Let me see if I can just show you. So I guess I'll, I'll have to show you here, but um, I randomize a rotation, so from minus one to one, because it's using um, radians instead of Euler angles. And that basically gives me a random rotation. So I'm actually going to mute this for a second. This is basically what it created. Basically a bunch of lines um, all rotated in lots of different directions. So this is 3,000 lines from the center, offset just by a little bit, 0.11 in this example. And then we're going to use something like a raycast node to only feed in a selection of those. And if you know the raycast node, it ba we're basically just taking this geometry we had of the letters, we're feeding it that, and we're taking this ray direction, which is the same that we're using for a rotation, and that's the direction of the ray. And if it actually hits this geometry, the lettering that we had before, then we'll get an is hit, put that in the selection, and that's basically what changes us from this to this, 
and obviously if we were to connect it you can kind of see it it feeds in the letters or feeds in the rays um, wherever the lettering is specifically so that as it creates a really cool effect and makes it feel like the light beams are shooting out to create the lettering so I'm gonna go back here so we are we basically just did this and the last thing I need to do is basically these are not visible to the renderer these are just curves so I need to do a curve to mesh and I select a profile so this gives it a little bit of depth you could obviously um, tweak the, the width of these lines. You could up or decrease the radius. Um, because I'm using such small lines, I create the resolution only at four. So these are actually like extruded rectangles at this point. But uh, since we're visually kind of looking at it from far, we don't need to have more resolution. You could, of course, add more points or uh, whatnot as you like. And again, we realize the instances, we set the material, and now we have basically this rotating hologram. And just for aesthetics, I used another transform to rotate and offset it. And you could, of course, just do that in the object as well. All right, so that's the it for geometry nodes. Next, I'm going to go into the shading and the compositing. So as you can see in the in the geometry nodes we have two materials where we have the text material and the lines material so I'm actually going to just mute this for now just so we can visualize it a little easier as we look at the shading and we're going to start with the text okay so I basically take texture coordinate object and I use a wave modifier so let me yeah okay Maybe in geometry nodes, I'm going to hide these lines just so you can see it a little bit better. Oops, there we go. Okay, so I just connected this so we can just see this. Okay, so we used a wave modifier and this creates our lines. So actually, I used object um, because I can't really set the UV coordinates and I actually tweak these rotation values a bit so it looks correct once it's rotated in geometry nodes. So let me actually, I'll just take this and I'll plug it in there and I'll unmute this so we have it rotated again. And now you can see they're all kind of parallel with the final composition I want. So you could obviously tweak these however you want. You could try and use generated or or different mappings um, but essentially that's what I'm doing and then I basically just use a, uh, a color ramp to really tweak those values and and choose the line widths and separations that I want so then there's um, we're basically creating this as a factor for a mix shader and wherever it's white it's going to be transparent and wherever it's black it will have an emissive shader and the last thing I did, because I am dealing with transparency, um, I basically just have, um, I didn't want the same brightness for the backs of the, of the lettering. So if I, let me see if I can just mute this. So if it's, if it's like this, you can kind of see they visually clash a little bit as, um, as it spins, it becomes a little less legible. So that's why I added a geometry back facing and basically made back facing just like a darker color so it's easier to read as this thing spins around. That's it for this shader and I'm gonna go into the lines and first let me just get all this back and we'll go back into the shading tab and we'll select lines now and what we're basically going to do is mix two shaders together with a gradient texture. So you can see I created a gradient texture. I remapped it. So you have a, a line that kind of goes from white or gray to black. And then I remap that and that will be my mix shader. And for this, I'm actually using two translucent shaders. Uh, this is because I ultimately render it in cycles. If you're doing something like Eevee, I would recommend using a transparent shader and an emission shader. 
And yeah, I basically just choose some colors. I use a little bit of layer weight just to get some varying, co varying colors so it's not too uniform. And that basically gives us something that looks a bit like this. It doesn't really show the lines very well unless you uh, actually render it because it requires a decent amount of samples. And we can go into light paths. So you can just see my settings here. I think I bumped up transmission a little bit, uh, but this might also just be default and saved as a FMPEG video. And the only last thing to show you is the compositing. So I'm just gonna render the first frame or frame eight just for a few seconds. And I'm going to cancel it just so we have something we can see in the compositor. So this is kind of what we get with cycles. And I actually didn't use a glare node, but I use a lens distortion. So that gives, gives us this really nice um, dispersion along the edges that makes it feel like a hologram. I used a second one just to add a little bit more. I use a hue color set, or sorry, a hue correct to adjust the colors and kind of make it feel a bit more vibrant. And then I use a hue saturation to, to kind of tweak and choose whichever color palette I think looks good. So you can kind of see there's lots of different variations and you could even randomize this among different objects and use crypto mats in order to have some variance between a few geometry nose shaders. And the last thing is if I were to go into animation, I create a point light and a sunlight and the sunlight is just a basic light to just give it a little more vibrancy. And the point light is actually sitting in the center and I created a single keyframe on the power. And I, under the animation curve, I added a noise modifier right here to create this wavy effect that gives it kind of that, um, that feeling that it's being projected from the center of the, of the scene. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and give a like. It would be greatly appreciated. See you in the next one.